Hello, I'm Andy. I'm the veterinary technician at Hoof and Paw Animal Clinic, and I believe we're going to talk about fleas and ticks. What are the differences between fleas and ticks, and how do they affect my cat or dog? Okay, well, first and foremost, fleas are insects, ticks are arachnids, so cousins to spiders. Um, the, the big difference between fleas and ticks is that fleas will build cities and skyscrapers on your animal, and ticks will not. So the life cycle of a flea is they find your pet, they bite your pet, they eat your pet, they lay a whole bunch of eggs, the eggs hatch, they turn into larvae, the larvae turn into nymphs, the nymphs turn into adults, and it perpetuates the cycle. In so doing, you're basically creating the island of Manhattan on your pet. Ticks are not that way. Ticks life cycle actually happens off of your pet. The only way that they are being a pain in the butt on your pet is by feeding off of them. And they, they don't lay eggs on your pet. They drop off after they're done eating their dinner and then they continue to propagate and wait for something else to come by. Where do fleas live on a cat? On a cat, they'll live anywhere, but you're most commonly going to see them around the neck and at the base of the tail, a lot of times on the belly too. But they like the, they like the areas that are not easily exposed to biting and scratching for obvious reasons. Can fleas and ticks affect other pets or people? Of course, because they're all going to go to whatever is the most available food source. So if you've got, if let's say, for example, you bring in a stray kitty and stray kitty has fleas and you have two kitties that you haven't had on flea prevention because you haven't had any reason to, uh, it's not going to take more than about three days before everybody is infested. And then you get to go to this next fun stage where you put flea medicine on everybody, but you're the only one that doesn't have flea prevention on you. So they're going to go to you. Now, the beautiful thing about people is we don't have a lot of hair, so we don't have a whole lot of ability for them to create skyscrapers on us, but it will be a pain in the butt in the meantime. What is the life cycle for fleas? Uh, well, again, it goes from, from mama flea to eggs to larva to pupa. I said nymph earlier. Nymph is actually ticks, but to pupa to adult flea. And that's all it takes. And it happens in about a week. What is the life cycle for ticks? So ticks is going to be adult and then egg, larva, nymph, new adult. Are there other types of parasites that my cat may get? Endoparasites. Uh, the one that you're going to be talking about most prominently is going to be tapeworms. Kitties are just rampant with carrying tapeworms. Now, the beautiful thing about tapeworms is they don't infest. You only have a handful of them at any given point in time. Uh, but tapeworms are spread by fleas. Kitty has to eat a flea in the process of scratching with their mouth predominantly. Uh, but the fleas carry tapeworm eggs, and that's how tapeworms become infested in kitty. How do fleas and ticks impact the health and well-being of my cat? So fleas, there, there's really only one, other than tapeworms, there's really only one passenger vector that, or the or fleas only have, besides tapeworms, they really only have one other thing that they carry, and that's called hemobartonella or hemobart, um, I think it's called something else now, but that was the old school name for it. And it's a bloodborne parasite that will cause anemia and fleas in their own nature of eating blood also cause anemia, which is a problem. If you run out of blood, then you can't really perform your normal bodily functions. Um, and then on the tick side of things, uh, there are a mountain of what we call spirochete infections. And spirochetes are a specific type of bacteria that are spread almost exclusively through ticks. So think Lyme disease, think Ehrlichia, um, anaplasmosis, Babesia, whatever that one is that makes you allergic to red meat that the Lone Star Tick's carrying now. I don't know what that is. I've just heard about it and it's terrifying. Um, but ticks, ticks are definitely going to be your big primary vector if you're worried about transmission of disease. Fleas, you've got hemobart, you've got tapeworms. Fleas are more of a pain in the butt just in their physical appearance, not necessarily so much their chemical transmission. How can a veterinarian help with flea and tick prevention? Oh, I would highly recommend getting a prescription strength flea and tick prevention. And nowadays we sell flea, tick, and heartworm and intestinal parasites all in one easy to dose combination. What are some signs and symptoms of a flea and tick infestation in your cat? Well, tick infestation isn't a thing, so you don't really have to worry about that. If you're going to have a tick infestation, it's going to be somebody like me who has a beagle that lives out in the country and the dog just runs around and just put collects ticks. Uh, flea infestation is going to manifest itself as dry, itchy, scratchy all the time that will not go away no matter how many times you bathe them. And I've heard that a million times. Um, if you were to test this hypothesis, 
you can actually take a paper towel or a piece of computer paper, put it underneath your cat and give them a good rub down. If you have a whole bunch of brown dirt underneath it, uh, that's flea dirt, that's flea poop, that's digested blood. Now, if you are like the type of person that wants to give your cat a bath until this problem is solved, what you'll notice with a flea infestation is that the water that runs off of them looks like diluted blood. And that's because it is, and it's because you're dissolving all of the flea dirt, which again is flea poop, which is digested blood. What are the most effective flea and tick treatments for cats? Uh, realistically, anything of prescription strength is going to be perfectly fine. Anything that you get from Walmart or PetSmart or anything like that, there's a handful of which the prescription only patent has expired now. So I'm talking Advantage 2, but that one just does fleas. Um, in our clinic, we use Simperica Trio, we use Brevecto, we use NexGuard, and now for cats we have this one called NexGuard Plus. And that one actually takes care of the tapeworms also, which is why I was pretty adamant about us starting to stock it.